Big mess tests often appear on YouTube, with people using a vacuum to suck up an enormous amount of dust in one go. On the one hand, they're popular, because they serve as a form of visual entertainment, with many finding them very satisfying to watch in an aesthetically pleasing and therapeutic way. Unfortunately, almost all who perform the demos on YouTube don't promote them as a form of entertainment, and instead try to use the demonstration as evidence of the performance of the cleaner, and attempt to draw some meaningful conclusions. This constitutes one of the greatest sources of misinformation about vacuum cleaners, short of outright intentional propaganda. This short video is intended to highlight this and explain why you should never judge the real world true performance of any vacuum by how they perform in so-called big mess tests. The dust in big mess tests is often collected from previous vacuum sessions and distributed across the floor. In addition to lots of dust, bedroom big mess tests often use large tufts of dense fluff. Such large tufts often get chewed up by brush bars and in some cases can cause jamming. Such tufts will be better broken up and combed back into fibres as they were originally collected. When searching for reviews of cleaners I considered purchasing recently as a replacement to my ageing vacuum, I saw videos where people actually criticised cleaners because they became jammed. This isn't very good, and a vacuum cleaner should never be reviewed based on whether it can cope with an extreme situation that people would never encounter in real world use, and that the cleaner was never designed to deal with. If a big mess test is done correctly, and simply used a large quantity of normal dust, it would in fact represent an accelerated use test. This is a legitimate test and is in fact performed in formal lab testing to high standards. It's the equivalent of collecting months or years of dust in a short space of time to principally see how efficient the filtration system of a particular vacuum is, whether or not it loses any suction, and how quickly this happens. This is very different to measuring cleaning performance, which measures statistically how much dust is removed from a range of floor types according to strict criteria. Another major problem with YouTube bedroom big mess tests I've seen is that the users frequently overfill the bin. I've already produced a video with a link in the description explaining why overfilling the bin will lead to vacuum cleaner failure. Even worse, some videos try to test if a vacuum can actually cope with this overfilling abuse and downrate the vacuum if it fails. This is akin to dropping a glass and criticising if it smashes. It's in fact for this reason why I suspect many such videos don't favour kinetic technology, which I've covered in another video in the description, and so readily buy into propaganda. In other words, there isn't much room for abuse in early forms of the kinetic cleaners, and fixing abuse is more difficult given it was never meant to be user maintained when used properly. Videos performing big mess tests as a measure of vacuum performance also frequently only pass the vacuum once forward and once backwards. In another video, with the third link in the description, I've explained why large quantities of mess to start with, and just a single pass, is completely unrepresentative of true cleaning performance, and it has complex origins in the statistical nature of removal of many particles from complex fibre networks. Some older vacuum head designs use brush bars which were driven by old-fashioned belts. Because of how this needed to be connected to the brush roll, there was often an unswept path down the centre. In big mess tests, with excessive quantities of dust on the floor, this often led to a more obvious visual line of dust remaining under the belt drive region. Its presence is sometimes used to downrate a vacuum. This isn't very good practice because normal vacuuming involves relatively low levels of surface mess, so a line of that magnitude would never show up, and straight suction would almost always be sufficient to remove normal mess levels. Vacuuming often also involves overlapping of strokes, such that any unswept line would likely be covered in a subsequent stroke. It's thus very misleading to suggest the presence of an obvious unswept line in exaggerated messes is an indication that the vacuum has low cleaning performance. In summary, big mess tests should never be seen or reported as anything other than pure visual entertainment, and when it isn't, it's clear there's a genuine misunderstanding of how vacuum cleaners work. This is very misleading for people, and also risks doing a disservice to manufacturers and potential customers. I'd recommend big mess tests be seen and promoted as nothing more than a bit of fun and entertainment.